From Asbury Park at Asbury Elementary School, WHCS, Cable Channel 46 presents Peninsula Girls Fast Pitch Softball. The Phoebus Phantoms visiting the Kigatan Warriors. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole, along with Bob Hintz. We welcome you to Francis Asbury Park for this game between the 8, 7, and 2 Phoebus Phantoms and the 10, 6, and 1 Kikatan Warriors. As you see on your screen, those are the Kikatan Warriors getting set to do battle. Bob, these two teams met earlier in the year. I understand they had a classic battle. Well, I tell you, Tim, it really was. Uh, Phoebus was, had five hits and had 16 strikeouts. Joanne Irvin did pitching, and Kerry Alexander had 17 strikeouts and gave up three hits. And after 12 innings, there was no score, and it got dark. So they ended up with a tie. In fact, it's kind of funny. I was talking to Mac, uh, Coach McDonald, and he said that they've had two ties in, his, in the history of uh, uh, softball at Kickatan and both of them against Phoebus. So always a good competition. We have for your pleasure the officials tonight behind the plate is tom mcdonald no relation i assume no it's mc and said mac there you go and ron porterfield will be our field umpire and today's game is brought to you by zooms with four convenient hampton locations that took one away but they're rebuilding it i saw yes they are and also by gear up printing with tommy gear give them a call at 827 8277 and do we have a third one? Yes, we do. And that would be? Woods Funeral Home. Where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. We are just moments away from a battle between these two teams. Always good matchups. We will also have for you, Bob, one of the things that Bob will be sharing with uh, the viewers today are the grade point averages. We, when we use GPA, we're not talking about batting averages or pitching. No. We're well, talking we got about the grade point average. We got three uh, managers over for Kickatan. We got Kurt Thomas. He's a 12th grader. His GPA is 4.39. Jason Shahan, 12th grader, GPA 4.35. And John Thomas, a 9th grader, GPA is 4.30. Now, the two Thomases are sons of Linda Thomas, who was the athletic director. And, of course, the, the smarts come from the wife. We just want to make sure Leonard understands that even though he gave me this, he's not going to get the plug. <laughs> well, if he was smart, he would have known that already. <laughs> nice crowd on hand. Game time, perfect weather. Temperature in the mid-70s, just a light breeze. No factor, no rain threatening or anything, just... A severe threat of a major sneeze from yours truly as the allergies are in full gear out here in the Flana Flora of Asbury Park. Of course, the Warriors, this is their home squad where they play their home games, and we'll have those lineups for you. You got more paperwork there. Well, we did give you something I wanted to share with the, the folks. It's about a, here it is. Uh, it's called PFSP. It's a promoting fast pitch softball on the peninsula. This is a one man organization designed to promote and to teach fast pitch fundamentals to the peninsula young ladies. This organization is a nonprofit and is, will only accept small donations that will be used to cover small expenses. A, and this is going to be a uh, league this summer. The leagues will be serviced in the near future are the Hampton Width area, Francis Mallory, and Middlesex County. So please call Wade Trainum at 851-1205 to set up a time for your league or your team. What was that number again, Bob? 851-1205. All right. We are about set to get this one underway as the Warriors infield and battery combination meet at the center of the field you may have noticed if you're a first time viewer or an infrequent viewer at least there is a circle around the pitcher's mound and of course that is, is a help when uh, the ball is back in the pitcher's hands and she's inside that circle you cannot leave the base all right let's look at the lineups for the phantoms there you see their lineup and our leadoff batter is claire Qui. claire is 11th grader and the first pitch is outside for a ball. But well, she's batting 327 coming to today's contest. Uh, gets on base a lot. Kara Alexander is the pitcher for the Warriors. And Jennifer Smith 
is her battery mate behind the plate. Two balls and no strikes to the leadoff batter. Alexander delivers. This one hit right side. This is going to be a close play, and it'll be a base hit as Quee beats it out for an infield single. Well, when that, once that ball got by the third baseman, it was not going to... Uh, they were going to get Quee out. She's got a lot of speed, Tim, and uh, that was a too deep of a throw, and it really wasn't a hard hit ball. Robin Sanzo down the left field line and it's foul before it reaches the base. But again, if you're an infrequent watcher of these fast pitch games, it is fast pitch isn't the only reference to fast here. They have to be fast on the infield to get to these balls because it's a very short distance between the bases and these young ladies can flat pick them up and move them. They really can. Uh, now Robin is one of the two seniors that Wade has on his team. Again, foul down the left field side or third baseline at least. And so now the count 0 oh, and 2. And the same rule applies as it does in baseball. You cannot attempt a bunt on a third strike. If it is foul, then it's an automatic. Well, you can attempt it, but, well, attempt, it, yeah. but if you're in if you're unsuccessful in attempting, I should clarify, it is considered a strikeout. Sanzo looks at the pitch back quickly. Quee just got back. Good throw uh, down. Nice to throw Smith. by Jennifer Smith with the catcher. Young lady has really uh, excelled at that catcher position. In fact, the young man that we were talking to earlier, that's his girlfriend. I see. That's Stuart Blau. That's right there for a call strike three. So Kara Alexander gets the first strike out of the ball game. And that'll bring up her counterpart, the pitcher for Phoebus, Joanna Irvin. Joanna, just 11th grader, Tim, has been pitching for the Phantoms since she's been a ninth grader freshman and could have started before if it was if she was eligible. Pitches inside for a ball. One away here in the top of the first. Runner on first. One out. This one hits sharply past the shortstop for a base hit. And the Phantoms will have runners at first and second. Nice hit by Joanna. This will bring up her battery mate, number 13, Jen Ward. Ward will be batting right-handed. She's going to get a quick conference with Coach Trainum down the third baseline. She's batting 298 coming in today's action. I was looking for... Uh, Joanne Irvin's and I've got everything on. I've got two pages, but I don't have anything about a batting average. We're going to have a pinch runner for Joanna Irvin, and that will be number 12. Bob, do we have a name to go along yes, with? Yes, we do. For the Phantoms, Katie Carpenter. Okay. Smith shows butt, pulls it back, but gets a call strike nonetheless. 0 and 1 to Smith. Runners at first and second with one out. This is the first year for Jennifer catching and has really been an addition to this team. And they've really uh, have enjoyed having her as catcher. She does a great job. Nice off speed pitch by Kara. Didn't we see Kara last year struggle in the game we did here? Really played well, but just didn't have much support, if I remember correctly. And yep. Hung in there, and she ended up having a great season. Strike three as the changeup gets Ward looking. Kara's got a scholarship to uh, Meredith College. And uh, really looking forward to it. Now, the reason we started a little late today, some, we had three seniors at Bethel, I mean at uh, Kickatan High School that we're taking AP tests right after school. That's why we have a 6.30 start. Amy Neff steps in with two outs and runners at first and second. First pitch to her is low inside for a ball. This is the first year for this young lady playing, foot, uh, playing fast pitch. I've got the wrong person on here, Bob. That is 21 Miss Crystal Woods, I believe. <laughs> okay, she is. That's because she's DH and for Amy Neff. I'm sorry, Tim. No, that's yeah, my Crystal fault. Crystal is the DH. That's my fault. She's batting 516. 
Yeah, Crystal is the DH. Talk yeah. about Amy because Amy does play in the field. That ball is a fair ball, touched by the first baseman playing home, and got her. A nice throw. A good job. So a good play there. The ball, now Wade is going to uh, discuss this with the plate umpire. Yeah, he thinks if the if it hit the plate, foul ball. Well, watch the right. play here. You'll see it at home. Good throw and a good tag. I don't think that the uh, call at home is is what he is he's arguing about. Right, right. I agree with you. While we got this break, let's go ahead and look at the uh, lineup for the Warriors. Well, we're looking at that, WHCS Channel 46 welcomes you to the Mass Zone. This is a live televised interactive call-in program for students to get help with their math. Join Tyler Elementary teacher Cassandra Hamilton and Davis Middle School teacher Sherry Martin. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Call 850-5426 and join the Mass Zone. Seems like Joanna has been pitching for Phoebus for about eight years. <laughs> well, uh, the, we want to offer our condolences to the Irvin family. Uh, her grandpa died today. Oh no! And uh, which is her mama's daddy, and her mother has been team mother on this team. This is her seventh year as team mother. She had another daughter that played third base for Wade uh, for four years. <laughs> And there you see the kick a tan line. That's our no intercom system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Okay, who we have here? Leadoff batter, Felicia Peoples. Batting 250. She plays left field. Irvin's first pitch is a call strike. That caught the corner right at the knees. Down the right field line, fair ball. And that'll be a base hit, single for yes. Felicia Peoples. Man, that just did get in there. So Felicia Peoples is on first with a single, and that'll bring up Megan Branner. Now Megan is batting 286. Lay shortstop for the Warriors. Now we look for a, perhaps a bunt here. Well, that's what the, you know, the Warriors uh, watched the Phoebus Phantoms do that. They got their initial uh, leadoff batter on and then tried to butter over. Let's see if they do the same thing. Branner is the batter. On deck is Woolwine. And that is an attempt. It's a foul out of play. And you see when they square around the bunt, the third baseman is already halfway there and Joanna off the pitching mound comes running in. So the best place to throw the bunt that really is down the first baseline if you can. Foul out of play. So quickly, Irvin ahead on the count, 0 and 2. Young ladies had 16 hits, four doubles, a triple and three home runs this year. Megan can't hit that ball. Change up, got her swinging way ahead of the pitch. And that's what all that body motion by her Joanna will do for you. You think the ball is coming in at about 90 miles an hour and it floats <laughs> over there. And you screw yourself into the ground trying to swing at it. Well, it? you notice Kara did the same thing. Exactly. Both of them did. have all tremendous the uh, control of that ball. All the good pitchers have the good changeup. Now, Jessica's got the highest uh, batting average on the team, 447, Tim. Jessica Woolbine, first baseman. And she looks at the first pitch, high for a ball. Peoples over at first, one out. Bottom of the first, no score. Strike. Run it out, run it out. People's bluffing, and now she finally gets back to first. She's got about a third of the way down between first and second, trying to grow the throw. One and one the count.
This one hit right back the middle. Nice stop, but a short stop, but did, can't get the ball. Yes. Yes, they say she did have it. <laughs> yeah, we got a partisan crowd here. I'm not sure she had it. Time. Well, I, I guarantee you, I can't tell from here, although it appeared that she was struggling to control the ball before the runner got there. Let's see if we can. See, she did not have the ball, or at least if we can see that one more time, Scotty, it looked like the shortstop covering, I believe that's who came over there, was sitting down at the base. And now after further review, if you will, watch this again. They've, they've actually uh, had a re-ruling here. See, she hasn't got the ball and the runner's clearly there. So they got some help on that and that's what you call getting it correctly. And that's what they should always do is have that communication between the umpires. You got that right. Now batting four, four, Jennifer Smith, just a, a junior Tim, has been catching varsity since she was a freshman. Now, Wade's not happy with that, but that is the right call. And as we saw it on the replay, she did not have the ball when the runner was at the base. So that changes things a lot now. Instead of two outs, there's one out. And you got runners at first, first and, second. and second. Yep. Jen Smith, the batter. She's the uh, best slugger on the team has more extra base hits than anybody else. Strike call, throw down to third and is not caught by the third baseman. So in safely is Peoples and on the play, Woolwine moves over to second. So now the Warriors have runners at second and third with one out. And they say the count is one and one. So Irvin, in jeopardy here of giving up a run. Wing and a miss. Beautiful afternoon. Temperature oh, in the mid gorgeous. 70s, low humidity, nice little breeze. Great afternoon for the family and fans to come out here and watch a softball game. And these are two of the better teams. This one hit foul down the first baseline off the top of the dugout. <laughs> I don't know if you saw what happened, but one of the lady, one of the young ladies was standing up in the dugout and her head was right next to the to the tin roof and the ball hit her. And she just she dropped, bailed out, huh? She dropped like somebody in her. <laughs> <laughs> I know her heart's going about 90 miles an hour. Jen Smith hangs in there, one ball and two strikes. Change up out of the strike zone. Two and two. Phantom's trying to prevent a run here. Joanna Irvin reaching back for some of her trick pitches. That last one looked like a beach ball by the time I got up there. It was just floating. This is back with a fastball. It's low. Count runs full. First base is open. Jennifer, as a sophomore, made first team all district last year, Tim. Swing and a miss. And the ball gets away from the catcher. Now they'll have a play at home, and this will not be in time. Good play. Gets an RBI on that strikeout. Is that right? I would think so. <laughs> You're the scared for hey, the score, right? I'll say <laughs> RBI to anything. On the play, Woolwine moves over to third, and this will bring up Holly Champion with two outs. Batting 206 coming in today's. Uh, action. She's a uh, just a one of the seniors on the team. The only two seniors that are starting. Here's the replay. See the the, the strikeout because she couldn't hold on to the ball. She had to throw down to first, and that allowed Peoples to score from third base. Good heads up base running by the Warriors. Yeah, good good coaching on uh, by McDonald down there. Because you, if you figure they played 12 innings then with no score, so if you can get a run real quick, then that really puts pressure on the other team. Wade was questioning whether the runner ran inside the baseline, therefore obstructing the throw from first to home. Uh, good idea. It didn't fly, however. And this brings up, as I mentioned, Holly Champion, the right fielder. 
Number six. Holly wears a uh, rather extensive shin guard, if you will, actually goes from the top of her shoe to her kneecap on that left leg, the one closest to the pitcher. And she steps in the bucket. I wonder if she didn't injure that leg and probably is a little bit. Uh, that, that's a good point, Tim. Yeah. That really is a good point. But she, not, you're right, she stepped back away. It's what called stepping in the bucket to get away from that ball almost. This is outside. Two balls and one strike with two away. One run in here as the homestanding Kikatan Warriors have taken a 1 0 lead here in the bottom of the first. This one hit foul out of play. Will Wyatt at third. Two and two the count. Swing and a miss. So Urban strikes out the side, but <clears throat> excuse me, the Warriors get one hit and one run. Good heads up base running allows the Warriors to take the lead after one complete. Hey, Zooms, because let me tell you about Zooms real quickly, and then you can talk about that too. In fact, tell them about that part of the Zooms. Thing. We will pick up a player of the game from both teams tonight. Oh, Those players it. receive a plaque and a T-shirt. The plaque comes from Buckwall Engraving. They're la located on Kickatan Road. For all your engraving needs, contact Jim at 723-6067. Dave Buckwall is the owner. The shirt comes from the Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods, and they're located in Vicosa. They can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team and individual, equipment and uniforms, plus screen printing on, on the site. Call Dave Chubb at 868-8467, John Roberts' is owner. Well, I saw what you had all the written out there, but I saw over here first. I thought you were going with the... <laughs> With the mention of Zooms. Oh, uh, well, that, you're hungry. Uh, I am. What can I tell you? It's dinner time. All those, all those food items. Hey, Krispy Kreme donuts. You can wash it down with some of that great Bean Town coffee. Coca-Cola, ham and cheese subs. they got fried chicken and more. And they have that quality Sitco gasoline. David Allen and Zooms, good place to go for or after the game. Or after the game. Right. And for all your printing needs, give Tom Gear a call at Gear Up Printing. Give them a call at 827 827. Seven. That's it. 827 8277. Tom Gear. And again, we want to thank also Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. Appreciate them being one of our corporate sponsors this afternoon as well. Well, we played one. It took us uh, 22 minutes to play the first inning, Bob. We could be here until the mosquitoes <laughs> carry us off at this well. pace. Let's, let's hope, you know, when the sun goes down, the mosquitoes come up. And I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if they carry you away, we're in big there trouble. There you go. That was, that's the first sign of a problem. All right, second inning set to get underway, and this will be Shannon Kearns. And she plays shortstop. She's uh, batting 254, 11th grader. She's the one that almost got to put out on that... Uh, Run down to second base. Pitch from Alexander is a swinging strike. No, do you remember him? I told you I knew that girl. Just off the plate. Deep as a count at one and one. Foul back. One ball and two strikes. This game videotaped for your enjoyment on the 10th of May, 1999. Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz and the Channel 46 crew. Francis Asbury Park, girls fast pitch softball. On the inside corner for a call strike three. Great location on that pitch. That's three strikeouts now for Alexander. And this will bring up the first baseman, Jamie Williams, batting left-handed. Jamie is the uh, senior on this team with a great point average, Tim, of 3.74. 
and it will be the player from the Phoebus team that will receive the Academic Excellence Award, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Hits it on the right side, fielded by the first baseman easily for the unassisted out. Is that Woolwine down there that made that play? Yes. First baseman is Jessica Woolwine. And third batter due up. This is the center fielder, Danielle Woods. Danielle's batting 265. She got a half swung at the ball and got a call strike out of it. Just been, that's a rather unique batting style she has. I'm not sure what she's doing. Well, uh, so they're just trying to slap the ball down someplace. And, and Wade, if these young ladies can't get around on the ball, quickly enough really is with a real fast pitcher you just try to step in and just slap the ball hopefully you just knock it by one of the infielders just stuck the ball bad out there that time and bless you we knew it was coming that one's been coming since about 4 30. <laughs> excuse me ball and two strikes to the batter danielle woods on deck is the second baseman excuse me third baseman rather amanda kramer <laughs> you may be doing play-by-play -play for a while here, Bob. <laughs> Once it starts, it's hard to stop. Well, is what I'm, you're trying to tell I'm me. Determined is going to stop it. Hit go. to the right fielder and in safely. And I hesitate to say anything. <laughs> Again, bless you. What was it you hesitated to say? Well, I've seen a, a, what would appear to be a hit, not a hit, as a result of the ball just barely making it to the outfield. <laughs> it's number 16, Amanda Kramer coming up, and she's batting 265. Just two out, one on. Uh, almost one on. You, you okay? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> I may have to run out of here for a minute and come back, but I know you can handle it. I can handle it. I get double pay when you're gone. <laughs> Foul tip. One and one to count. I do apologize to the fans. I got some rather uh, severe allergies going on out here. And with all the plant life around here, I guess one could understand it. One ball, one strike, two outs. Runner at first. Kara Alexander, foul off her pitch. Amanda, 10th grader. Top of the order due up if she could keep this one going. Thought about it, held up, good idea. The ball was well outside, two and two. Two's a wild. Two balls, two strike, two out. Oh, only one on. Swing and a miss for strike three and the third out of the inning. So the Phantoms get a base runner but she is left on as Kara Alexander now has four strikeouts in one and a half innings. One hit, three hits in the ball game for the Phantoms now. You see some of the fans and Mr. Braxton. Right there. <laughs> Mr. Braxton. Mr. Colonel Braxton as we refer Colonel to Colonel Braxton. Uh, David Allen Zooms is recognizing the senior on each one of the softball team, the baseball team, and the soccer teams that we are televising during the spring action. With the highest GPA, these players will receive a plaque for outstanding academic excellence. They will receive this plaque at a school board meeting in June, and I believe it's the very first one in June. For the Kickatan Warriors, softball is Kara Alexander with a 4.04. .04. 
and with Jamie Williams for the Phoebus Phantoms with 3.74. We want to congratulate these two young ladies for their outstanding academic excellence. And as we congratulate them, they will be further uh, honored at that school board meeting you talked about with a nice plaque. We really appreciate David Allen and the Zooms folks for recognizing these scholar athletes. We really do. Who do we have here? All right, what we've got now is we got your DH coming up there. And that is? Allison Class. Swings on the first pitch, pops it up. This could be trouble, and it drops in. And you're right, that was just trouble all the way. She's batting 278 coming in. Bats for Tasha DeMatt, who's the third baseman. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Kara Alexander. Kara being a senior, batting 267. Ranks number 26 in her class. Again, we remind you, the runners cannot lead off. They can only leave after the pitch is released by the pitcher. That ball is fielded in foul territory. It stayed fair for a little bit and then yeah. just kind of rolled. So class makes it back to first base on deck is Jenny Hine, or Hain, I think that is. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second. And that ball is foul. Alexander hit it off the plate and then it bounced up and hit her bat. It's foul ball. 0-2 the count. Trying to advance that runner to second. Technique is pretty obvious. You want to get those runners around in the scoring position so they can score on a pass ball or an infield hit or almost anything. This one is fouled at the plate. Kara swinging away this time. Joanna's got a nice uh, variety of pitches, as does Kara. They both throw a rise and a drop and a change up. Just have to outguess the batter. Foul ball's just got a piece of that one. That was that uh, off-speed changeup. That ball just floated <laughs> up there. I mean, you know, you're you're ready to swing from the hips, and that you ball and just takes been, an hour. You and I would have still oh, didn't have to really, unscrew us. Exactly, I would have been three times around. And this one comes back with the heat, and just again staying alive. Kara having a good at bat. Hanging tough. Urban working hard here, trying to get this batter. And this time comes back to her. She'll play it at first for the out. And that's she got what one. she wanted. She got the runner advanced, and that's what she was trying to do with the uh, with the buck. And that will bring up the second baseman. Jenny Hayne. And Jenny's a, a junior at Kickatan. Batting only batting 194, but Tim, these young ladies sometimes get on a roll, can hit that ball. Bunting foul. Again, trying to move that runner over. Allison's getting a lot of work out on the, the base pass. <laughs> Foul back out of play. Oh, and two the count. One out here in the second. Warriors one. Phoebus nothing. Trying to add to that lead, trying to get the leadoff batter. Allison Class around. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So 
Joanna Urban reaches back, throws a beautiful pitch on the outside corner. She just couldn't lay off of it with two strikes. And with two out now, the number nine batter, Aaron Coburn, steps in. Aaron plays center field. Checks down the third baseline for the signals from Coach McDonald, and we're set to go. Urban delivers outside for a ball. Dirt. Throw down is not in time, so the didn't really go too far, but the inability to handle the ball cleanly allowed the runner to advance to third now. Well, Alice has got shown some pretty good speed on the base pass, so uh, she had a chance, she took off. So the two outs, count as two balls and no strikes. Strike ball. Quickly ahead of the count. On deck is the leadoff batter, Felicia Phillip, uh, Phillip, Felicia Peoples, excuse me. This would hit back to Irvin, the pitcher. Over to first, in time. First baseman having to fight that sun as the sun setting is right in the eyes of the first baseman. So that was a tough play, and, and it shouldn't have had to be. <clears throat> but because of the sun, it made it a little more difficult. PFSP <coughs> stands for Promoting Fast Pitch Softball on the Peninsula, a one-man organization designed to promote and teach fast pitch fundamentals to the Peninsula young ladies. This organization is a nonprofit and will only accept small don donations that will be used to cover small expenses of bringing the services of your softball league or team. Leagues will be serviced in the near future are Hampton with Francis a a Mallory and Middlesex County. Please call Wade Trainum 851-1205. Set up a time for your league or your team. Get ready to move to the top of the third inning. One run on, this is unofficial by the way, <laughs> one run on two hits for the Warriors, no runs on three hits for the Phantoms. You know, I'm looking at some of this stuff that uh, Richard McDonald gave me, and Jessica, Jessica Woolwine has more putouts than anybody else that has ever played for the Phantoms she had coming into today's game uh, 161, Tim, and she still has another year to go. But listen to this high batting average. I don't think this will ever be, be, be 647 for four years of playing ball at Kickatan. Christy Hill graduated in 1986. Young lady went to our church and she could hit the ball. Claire Quee steps in as the Phantoms will send the top of the order up here in the third. She'll be followed by Robin Sanzo and Joanna Irvin. Second year playing for the Phoebus, and she starts at uh, second base. And Claire. she was a player of the game in the championship game against Kickatan. Made second team all district last year. Claire was a uh, single hitter in the first inning. Down to third, over to first, and could not hold on to the ball. So I would imagine we would have to rule that as an E3. And again, in all fairness to the first baseman, she is looking into that wicked sun. She really is, Tim. That, that makes it tough, but you're right. That The, the throw was there, but you, you can lose it in that sun. Robin Sanzo steps in. Shows butt, strike one. Robin's been on the uh, Phoebus team for three years. She's contributed since her ninth grade year and been a starter since her uh, sophomore year. 
And she was also a player of the game. Nice bunt, third baseman playing in over to first. This one is in time for the out, but the runner advances to second. So Quee uh, over to second. Quee well, got what he wanted to advance that runner. Nice bunt by uh, Robin Sanzo. So now Irvin with a runner in scoring position, a chance to help her own cause. She singled her first time up. She's been first team district pitcher 97 98. Second team all regional last year. First team daily press last year and uh, was second team of 97. Joanna took a wicked swing at that change up and missed. The balls and one strike. Now she steps out. She is currently practicing with the ASA Peninsula Stars for the 1999 team. <laughs> Foul back. So Alexander quickly ahead on the count, 0 and 2. Now this is really neat. She's wearing jersey number 19 because it was worn by her sister, Amy Irvin, who played four years at third base for Coach Trainum and gradu graduated in 96. Hit to right field. Right fielder underneath the ball and makes the catch. Runner tags and the throw well over the head of the third baseman. And Queen will score from second. We got a tie game. There has to be a throwing error. So the runner scores from second after tagging up and the throw, watch the throw, you'll watch it on the replay here, just way too tall for the third baseman, had no chance at all. Bounced off the fence and Quee was able to score to tie the ball game at one all. Well, if you run, you can make things happen. <coughs> and that's exactly what Wade's doing. Who's this Jennifer Ward coming up, right? This is Jen Ward, the catcher. She struck this out is, the first inning. Excuse me, Tim. This is the first year. Uh, oh, that's right. This is the first year of playing for Phoebus. She was at Bethel uh, one year, or a couple years, I guess. Yeah, she was over there for two years. Two balls and no strikes. 3.6 GPA. So the error. Comes back to haunt the Warriors. And they end up with two play. errors. One on the uh, yep. first base and one on the center uh, <laughs> right fielder. <coughs> Foul out of play. On the hands, on the hands. Off the plate. Top of the third. King of ten, one, Phoebus one. It's this one foul down the third baseline. Now deuces are a wild Bob. Two and two, the count with two outs. But this is what Coach Trainum says about this young lady. He does a great job of catching Joanna and is a super addition to the team. Strike three swinging. So Alexander records her fifth strike out of the ball game. But the Phantoms are able to manufacture a run on a pair of errors. And they have now tied the ball game up as we move to the bottom of the third. Zooms, place to go when you need sit go gas, ice, soft drinks. Stopped at, stopped at the sit go zooms down here on the way in there. As a matter of fact, got me a, a big. Soft drink, transferred over to my special mug that you and I have uh, matching mugs here. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll have to keep an eye, keep an eye on you. Mine's almost empty. Yeah, yep, see, mine was uh, overflowing. What a deal, too. I got this huge drink for less than a buck. Couldn't even fit it all in my mug. 
good deal. Good time of the year to go buy Zeus, get some of that fried chicken, potato wedges, Krispy Kreme donuts, all that good stuff. Talk about the big brothers and the big sisters. Uh, Tommy Gear is on the board of the uh, big sisters, big brothers on the peninsula, and they have over 200 little brothers looking for big brothers. This is a great program, and if you are interested, give them a call at 827-0110. They need volunteers to spend four to five hours with their little brothers. Kids start as young as six years old. Tom Gear and Gear of Printing. Mr. Braxton? Mr. Braxton says Braxton he needs a big brother. He's a big brother. He must have finance. <laughs> <laughs> must have big brother with finance. And he needs finance. <laughs> <laughs> I think your big brother is called IRS. <laughs> That's another big brother. That's... How would I know him? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we get set to move to the bottom of the third, scheduled for seven, tied at one. The batter is the leadoff batter, Felicia Peoples. Alicia scored the only run for the Warriors, and a single and scored in the first. She's got a 459 on base average. She is the first year on the varsity. Last year she played JV. She wants to become a veterinarian. She's had three home runs this year, Tim. She's got shows a lot of speed. One and oh. Two and oh. Irvin catches the corner. Two balls and one strike. Hit to the right side. Second baseman with a short hop over to first in time. So nice Quee does a good job of playing the ball. That's a little, that's a dangerous little hop that ball takes there. And she came up with it clean. Brings up Megan Branner. Megan's got a 3.6 GPA, Tim. Megan was a strikeout victim in the first. On the corner for a strike. Well, Megan play started at third last year, and they moved her to uh, shortstop this year. She's had 28 putouts, 33 assists. 16 hits, four doubles, one triple, and three home runs. Urban quickly ahead, 0 and 2. Nobody on, one out. Bottom of the third. And strike three, swinging. Catcher needs to throw down and does so for the out. Fourth strikeout of the ball game for Joanna Irvin. That'll bring up Jessica Woolwine, the first baseman. She's got a 3.96 GPA, ranked 30th in her class. She was defensive player of the year, it was an eighth grader. Ooh, she hit the batter. She's a varsity cheerleader, didn't even get a chance to say a cheer. So Woolwine will uh, take one for the team. She moves down to first. And that'll bring up the catcher who has to quickly discard her shin guards as she uh, is ready now. Smith also struck out in the first inning. Now Jennifer, just a junior, Tim, last year as a sophomore, she was first team all district. She's had four doubles, two triples, two home runs, and has thrown out 17 runners trying to steal. That's pretty impressive. That's not easy to do. No, it isn't, and for the whole year, has not allowed but seven stolen bases. Woolwine, quickly down to second, gets back. 
So that would be a wild pitch, I would assume. Official score will tell us for certain, but uh, that one was in the dirt. So now the Warriors, with two outs, have a runner in scoring position. So that pass ball or that uh, wild pitch could be big here. Hit back to the pitcher. Takes a nasty hop. And got her just in yes, time. Did get her. Woo. Very close. I think it was the right call. Oh, I do too. But it was, I mean, you yeah, talking. It was bang, bang. Boom, boom. Yeah. So one runner left on the hit batsman. And we've played three complete. And after three, it's Kikitan one and Phoebus one. Again, I want to remind you that uh, one of our corporate sponsors today is Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. We appreciate the fine folks at Wood Funeral Home helping defray the cost of bringing you our sports here on Channel 46. Fourth inning is upon us, and the Phantoms will send up Crystal Class, Shannon Kearns, and Jamie Williams. I want to recognize the coaches, the Kickatan coaches, head coach, of course, Richard McDonald's, assisted by Jason Lang and Phil Alexander. And I'll find the Phoebus coaches in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> I feel confident you will. Ah, here we go. Coach Wade Trainum, of course, Ray Walden, and Craig Smith helps him out. And, of course, Penny Irvin has been a team mother for seven years. Oh, and we want to wish her a late happy birthday. Wade says I better do that, then he gets an extra Coke. I don't know how close we are to the water, but I just saw a duck fly across from center field to left field. Some of the wildlife out here. <laughs> you being Hampton, you're going to be close to water somewhere. That's pretty true. <laughs> Crystal Class, Shannon Kearns, and Jamie Williams are due up here in the fourth inning for the Phantoms. <coughs> Things moving along here. I got to get home in time to watch Allie McBeal. Or WWF, one of those things. <laughs> Who's up? Who's up? Who's on first? This is number 21. Who you got for 21? Rest the wood. The D.H. Three triples, two doubles. They call her nickname is Big Stick, batting 516. Coming in today's action. First year on a varsity for free. Just transferred from Hampton last year. Strike one to Crystal. Has played basketball, played as a ninth grader when she was over to Hampton. Foul back, strike two. And we remember her as the starting forward on the uh, Phoebus girls team this year. Sure do. A lot of these young ladies play multiple sports. Now, who's she DHing for? She's DHing for Amy Neff, who is the left fielder. Just outside, one ball and two strikes to the leadoff batter here in the top of the fourth inning. Tim Cole and Bob Hinks coming to you. Amy's got a 3.0 GPA. Gets this one off the fist. Second baseman up with it in time over to Woolwine. So Shannon Kearns steps in, shortstop. Shannon's got a 3.0 GPA. This is the first year on the varsity. First two years she was at, uh, was also over to Hampton. Her nickname is Scrappy. She's an ROTC program at, at uh, Phoebus. In the dirt, one and one. Jamie Williams on deck. Shannon struck out in the second inning. Inside. Anna. 
Anna. Swing and a miss. She's right here. Two and two. You can see the uh, sun is coming down, and it's not going to be in the player's eyes much longer, Tim. Getting to that point where it'll be a shade on the field, but again, now first baseman I think is now uh, in a position where she will not be looking into the sun. I wonder if they're going to turn the lights on. That's this one is hit to center field. Makes the grab. Jamie Williams will be due up. This young lady playing first base up in Washington. She does a good job. She gets her hands, lets people know where she is. She does a good job stretching for the ball. She's had three doubles in one game against Denby, tied a school record. Foul that kind of play. Got a 3.74 GPA. She's a young lady that will be recognized as the academic player on the uh, Phoebus Phantom team. Should Jamie keep the inning alive, Danielle Woods would be due up. Strike call. Jamie strike was two. Miss Varsity soft, softball on the homecoming court this year. She's in kids, peer mediation, swim team, math honor society, national honor society, stays real busy. It's this one foul into the stands, look out below. That remains 0 and 2. I think they're waiting for a ball. Jamie, watch the chain. One one, our score. Let's see a good look at Kara. She delivers on the corner. Oh, Strike what a breaking ball. ball! That was nasty. So one, two, three, go the Phantoms. And we move now to the bottom of the fourth. But first, let's take a brief timeout. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> Jim's about to wipe his nose on his sleeve for you people who want to. Hey, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I tell you, he's having trouble. I... I'm hanging in. Well, I, I, I don't so. have that problem. I'm glad because you sound like you're yeah. really fighting it. Bottom of the fourth. That will find the middle of the lineup due up for the Warriors as we have a tie ball game here. Leadoff batter scheduled to be Holly Champion, and she will be followed by Allison Class. Get back. Look at this man has napkins. I got tissues, everything. everything. I'll take care of you. I know. Yeah, all right. Donna told me take care of that poor boy. <laughs> she told me to, she told you to take me away is what she said. Oh, is that what she said? <laughs> so we are uh, looking at champion at the plate, followed by Allison Class and the pitcher Kara Alexander. First pitch As low a, for ball. Uh, She's got a 3.35 GPA, Tim, is one of the seniors on this team. Freshman year, she had got the coaches award. Junior year, first team all district, all team daily press, offensive player. Hit the shortstop, long throw in time. Oh, two pitches, one out, and the DH. Allison Class steps in. Watch the replay here. The ball. It's sharp into the shortstop. Good job feeling the ball, set her foot, and threw her out. Talk about a young lady that's busy. She's a member of Youth and Government, Kietz, Safe School Committee, French Club, also plays on a varsity tennis in the fall, and plays winter soccer. Second year on a varsity. I'm sorry, two years on JV, first year on a varsity, just a junior. 4.17 GPA is ranked 14th in her junior class. And you think maybe she has some nervous energy? See nice her bouncing geez. up there? <laughs> and she's, she's the one that got on the, the, the base, scored, yep. but was uh, showed good running ability on the bases. 
on base of 425 average. There you see the count, two and one with one out. Foul ball. Two and two. Kara Alexander due up. Following Allison. See, she got, look at all that. She's bouncing up there. <laughs> Don't you wish well. you had a little I bit of that I energy? I just an ounce of that energy. This one up, popped up. up. Might be playable for the catcher. Tough play. Nice draft. Always a tough play. Catcher has a, a tough job to do there. So now with two down, the pitcher, Kara Alexander. Harris pitched a three hitter this afternoon. Joanna delivers strike. Catcher couldn't hold on to it, but nonetheless, a strike called. She was 15 and 6 last year as a uh, pitcher, had 110 strikeouts. We, we caught a game real early this season, uh, if I yeah. remember correctly. She just had a tough outing, kind of an inexperienced Jeez, squad behind her. But boy, did she come on during the year. But she got player of the game in the uh, tournament championship game that we did. She ended the season with five straight shutouts huh. and one no hitter. That's great. And that ain't bad. Off the end of the bat, this could be a close play. And interesting, the pitcher <laughs> literally moved the ball from her glove to the first baseman's glove to record the out. Interesting way to play that. But one, two, three, in order go the Warriors. And that completes four innings now. And it's still one, one. We will pick a player of the game from both of these teams, and that player will receive a plaque and a T-shirt. The plaque comes from Buck Walter Engraving. They're located, located at Kickatan Road. For all your engraving needs, contact Jim at 723-6067, Dave Buckwald is the owner. The shirt comes from the Island of Hardware and Sporting Goods and they're located in Pocosa. And they can meet all your sports needs with a full line of athletic goods, both team and individual, equipment and uniforms, plus screen printing. Call Dave Chubb at 868-8467. John Roberts is the owner. And of course, don't forget about gear up printing and in all your printing needs. Give Tommy Gear a call at 827 8277. I'll let you go solo there. I know ever since that. you showed me these napkins, my nose is cleared up. So <laughs> it's a psychological thing, right? Well, doing better. I figured Big I might have stick them in my. You never know when you need them, so I just threw them in my right. little bag there. Appreciate that. There you see a bunch of the Phoebus players hamming it up for Ron Baton down there. You know what's very unusual? Not only the that I put them in a bag, but the key was I remembered yeah. I put them in a bag. <laughs> I know. Like preventive medicine. Lights have been turned on here just to make sure everybody can see nicely. Gentlemen down there, this has got a walking cast on. It's uh, Phil Alexander. I think. We're, we're on the screen. That's Phil. All right, leading off, Danielle Woods. She'll be followed by Amanda Kramer, and then the top of the order, Claire Quee. This is uh, Danielle's first year playing on the varsity. She played for Hampton last year on the junior varsity. He made the paper with the over-the-back catch against Kickathan. How about that? She's been playing softball since she was eight years old. She plays varsity basketball. Got a 3.56 GPA. But again, her unique style, watch how she does this. She's not up there planting her feet, getting ready to swing from the hips. She just kind of sticks the bat out there just trying to make some contact with it. This time she watches the pitch and it's a call strike. So Got that Karen inside corner. Ahead on the count, 0-2. Top of the fifth inning. And yeah, that's right, 12 innings of no runs in their first encounter. Now they've played four complete with just one run. So that's 16 innings between these two teams and they've only been able to get one run apiece. <laughs> Are they evenly matched or what? I guess so, and they got two real fine pitchers going this afternoon. That's that's the big thing. If you don't have the pitching, 
in girls' fast pitch softball, you are in deep trouble. Off the fist, hit to the right side. Second baseman has trouble and cannot get it out of the glove. And in time, reaching first base, Danielle Woods will get there on the air. Now, how do you call that? I got to call that one an E uh, on the second baseman. E, what is it, E4. Because had she gotten the ball cleanly, she would have had her. Yeah, she, no she just couldn't get it out of couldn't her glove. Out. Sometimes it happens. Is this Amanda Kramer we've got coming up? This is Amanda Kramer. She is. Wait a second, I got her as number, number, she's number 17. That's 17, Tim. Oops, what? Then it's not Amanda Kramer, now, is it? That's why that number threw you off. So we've got a change. That's Angel Perkins. Angel just a sophomore. So Wade Tratum goes to the bench here in an effort to uh, get some firepower. Angel shows bunt, throw down to first, back in time. And here's where the strategy gets real intricate because well, they it, you know, really want to push that run over. Angel and Kara go to the same church. Ah. Though they're very good friends. Angel plays first base, got a 3.81 GPA, just a sophomore, as I said. Swing and a miss. Second year on a varsity. She's on the girls ensemble choir, first year in ROTC, and is in the Spanish Honor Society. Nobody out here in the fifth. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Now Wade. Trying to communicate with signals, and I think maybe Angel missed the signal. It looked like he, Wade looked like he was a little concerned. Just speculation on my part. I'm not saying she did. Tim said that. I, I didn't, said. Angel. <laughs> High for a ball. Two and two the count. Phantom's trying to get that runner over to second, at least. Or if, if possible, but at least to second. And swing and a miss. Nice pitch from Karen. That brings up number three, who is? No, it brings up Claire Quee, number oh, seven. Sorry, number seven. Yep. Yeah. Top of the order. Claire had a single in the first, reached on an error in the third, and scored the only run for the Phantoms. She's a drag bunner, especially as left-handed slap shot. She's also a member of the vocal ensemble as well as a drama club and is on the National Honor Society with a 3.6 GPA. Just a junior. Hacks at it for a strike. This one way out of the strike zone, but Quee swings at it. And she mad at herself because she yeah. said, oh, I should. <laughs> that was, that was well, definitely a ball. She was going to swing no matter what. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. Getting down to crunch time here. Fifth inning, 1-1. One, one. Strike three, called. Caught the corner. Nice pitch from Kara Alexander. She is working the corners. That brings up Robin Sanzo, better known as Prissy. Eight K's in the game for Kara. So now two down with a runner on first. She's been a varsity cheerleader for three years, and she's currently a captain member of the FBLA, peer mediation, and the Kia, Kia Club. So Alexander quickly ahead on the count. In the dirt. Runner on first, unable to advance here. Good job by Jen Smith to keep that ball from getting past her. 
Shortstop, I mean, the backstop is very short distance behind the catcher, but with these short base paths and the quickness these girls have, just one slight miscue and they can be on the next base. Change up is outside. Ball, excuse me, two balls and one strike. You having trouble getting comfortable? I got this, this, this chair I stole from the me. Yeah, I know. And I'm, now I I'm feel like I'm sitting in a hole. This one is a blooper. Oh, nice grab. All it has to do is walk over to second job. and double. Oh, that was the third out. Never mind. Nice play. I was thinking there was one out. She had an easy double play there, but didn't need it. As that excellent effort by the right fielder. Here's the replay. Watch this. She had to come in and running catch for the third out and prevented what could have been a very crucial rally by the Phantoms. That's Holly Champion on that playing that right field, Tim. So we move to the bottom of the fifth. One run on three hits for Phoebus and one run on two hits for Kikitan. And they will have due up in their half of the fifth inning. Jenny Hain, Aaron Coburn, and then the top of the order, Felicia Peoples. Scheduled for seven, but Obviously, if it's still oh, one well, to one, it will continue to go, right? It'll go, and I'll miss <laughs> Allie McNeil. <laughs> well, and the dancing baby. And the dancing baby. Yeah, well, Jen has a 3.59 GPA. She plays second, of course. Got an on base average of 395, fielding average of 900. This is her, she had two years on JV, and this is her second year on her varsity. She's a member of the Key Club has had 26 put outs and 19 assists this year. So we have a uh, number 16, a re-entry, Kramer, who oh, came out. Okay. So they're re allowed to come out for a pinch hitter and then re-enter, which is what she did. A little paperwork taken care of by the plate upper, Tom McDonald. Did you take care of it, I your did. paperwork? Uh, my paperwork's all taken care of. <laughs> you done. All right. Hayne fouls it back out of play. Look out. It, oh, it's hit that stand. white convertible. Oh, my it? goodness. That's not yours, is it? I parked out on uh, <laughs> Beach Road. <laughs> oh, that's not a good place to park. That's true, but at least I won't get hit by soft. <laughs> this is one heck of a foul ball. 0 oh, 1 to count. Went for it, 0 oh, 2. So Urban getting in a groove now, and she's retired. Nine of the last ten batters that she's faced. The only one she didn't retire, she hit. Strike three. You know, something about the softball pitchers, it seems like the more they pitch, the better they get. They get stronger as yep. they go along. Get into that groove. So now the number nine batter, Aaron Coburn. Aaron's got a 3.33 GPA. Second year on the varsity. She tells me she's looking for a job right now. So if you can hire her, Tim, give her a call, will you? She grounded out, pitcher the first the last time up. Turns around to show bunt, but pulls it back for a ball. Now, you know, they turn the lights on here. That's just like turning on the landing strip for those uh, those Fox Hill mosquitoes. They're all hovering over the... Uh, over Braxton? Over Braxton. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> There's a dark cloud over there. Oh, over. that's mosquitoes. That's not cloud. <laughs> it's circling. Circling, <laughs> looking for some tender middles. Strike. Two balls in one strike with one out. Both teams settling in here. Looks like the next team to score a run could be in real good shape. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Thank 
fouled out of play. Well, she just caught that on the end of the bat. Well, you said your car's parked out there on Beach Road, and <laughs> they may be coming to get it. Nah. Two and two the count. Foul ball. Boy, our officials are doing a good job today. They've done a fine job. And that is McDonald behind the plate, and who's out on the base pass? The umpire on a base pass is Mr. Porterfield. That is Ron Porterfield. Good shot of uh, Joanna. Swing and a miss. Out number two. So two strikeouts in the inning. Seven Ks in the game for Joanna Irvin. And the top of the order, Felicia Peoples, who scored the only run for the Warriors. But she's had three homers and a double this year. <clears throat> Foul back. Both of these pitches is bringing good pitches to the plate. Well, see, you, you, and they, they start bringing that heat, and you're ready for it, and they throw that change up in there, and you just, you can't, you can't hold up. You've already started your swing. That was the change up, but it's high. Two down here in the Warrior half of the fifth. On deck, should Felicia keep this one going, would be Megan Branner. Swing and a miss, strike two. Hit back, third baseman. Over to first, good stretch, got her. Excellent job, excellent job. So one, two, three, in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Here's your replay. Watch this long stretch by the first baseman. Just got her by about a half a step. So Joanna Irvin continues her mastery, has allowed just two hits and one run through five complete. Two more innings to do something, Bob, and then we go into the extra innings. Well, if this goes into extra innings, it's not going to be a big surprise to the uh, fans here. Reminder, our corporate sponsors for today's game, Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. Gear of Printing, where Tom Gear can take care of all your printing needs. Give them a call at 827-8277. And Zooms, Zoom Sitco. Great food, quality gas, ice, all that stuff. I'll tell you, this is getting to be fishing season. Now you're gonna to wanna to go by and fill up your cooler with ice and cold drinks from Zooms, a little fried gas, chicken, a little fried chicken to take out in the boat. Put some uh, gasoline in the can for the boat. I mean, they got it all. You just go there, they fix you up, and you're on your way. And pick up plenty of ice to put all that fish you're going to catch. There right? you go. This is my time of year. I'm, I'm going down to uh, take my beach week down at the Outer Banks here, the latter part of the month. I'll get my fishing rod all cleaned up and ready to go. I'll see if I can bring home some fresh ones. Well, if you, you catch some nice ones, you clean them and all, and invite me over, and I'll help you eat them. You're a heck of a guy. You know? I tell you, well, look what I did for you, Tim. Well, I you, found napkins. So and my nose was stuck. Uh, <laughs> what a guy, huh? Max says, what a guy. That's a big thing. I'll catch, catch him and clean them, and he'll be glad to eat them. I like that. What a guy. I'm always looking out for you, Tim. <laughs> they get Sky to quit running that truck. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought, running that truck, the people inside don't like you. <laughs> I just thought two people fall over dead from the stands. <laughs> All right, Phantoms, top of the sixth. It's getting down to crunch time now. This is your leadoff batter. Joanna Irvin, she checks her swing, but fouls it. Oh, got one of the fans and almost a baby down there. That was wow. close. 
Joanna is a member of the uh, Kiets FHA uh, Hero. She, she takes a food occupation class, and this restaurant is in the school, and it's called the Blue Phantom Inn. They cook and serve teachers, school board members, and the community. This program was recognized in Southern Living Mag Magazine that will be published in the December issue. Set to go now with the ball return. Joanna is dedicating this season in memory of Buck Kirby, a father of a former Phoebus High School softball player, Anna Chapman, and also Coach Trainum's father, Dr. Trainum. They both died in 1998. She probably, and I told you about wearing number 19, she does that because her sister will. By far the longest contact of the day, but it was crooked down that third base left field line. Joanna Irvin got a lot of metal on that ball. Joanna, choke up, watch the change up. <laughs> Joanne played 1998 fall ball season with Great Bridge and with the Phoebus fall ball team. Two years MVP award at Phoebus. Currently, and I told you, currently practicing with ASA All-Star, Peninsula Stars, the 1999 team. One ball and two strikes to Joanna. Looking for a rally here to get her team on the board with a run. Swing and a miss as Alexander took a little off of that pitch. Well, it's always nice to strike out the opposing pitcher. Oh, sure. Both both of these young ladies are very competitive. So the catcher, Jen Ward, steps in. Jen has had no success this afternoon against Alexander. Struck out both times has faced her. Might say she's due. She Ooh. is due. Hit that. That was a unique little play. She hit it off the fists, off her bat. The bat, the ball flew off the bat, hit her in the top of the helmet, or, or the the lip of the helmet, knocked her helmet off. I think it's called the bill. Yeah, the bill. I'll send you the bill. <laughs> Wade went down there as uh, you figured he would. He's always got these young ladies' uh, interest at heart. He I'll does sure that. She's all right. She's got a 3.6 GPA, just a junior. Ranks 38th in her class. Swing and a miss. The fans might want to buy more bug spray and settle in. This one could be here for a while. That was a nice pitch inside corner. Kind of jammed her a little bit, but it got the corner. And she swings at the ball on the inside and down to first for the put out. Strike out and put out. So two down. And this will bring up Crystal Class. Crystal Woods. Woods, I'm sorry, I can't, can't read now. I'm looking, I'm looking, I said, well, I got I Woods. I got the wrong person, I got Do you Crystal. have something I don't have? I got, uh, I got Woods everywhere here. We call her Big Stick. And she delivers with a single up the middle. Yeah. Turn the lights on here before too long. Just the lights on. <laughs> and put my eyes on. So, a rarity this afternoon, and that is a base hit. Yeah, just Shannon. the fourth. Was this uh, Kearns? This would yeah. be Shannon Kearns. Right, she had a winning hit and a win over Bethel. Bethel, has, of course, got a good team. Takes the pitch on the inside corner. Nice pitch from Alexander. She's in her ROTC program at uh, Phoebus, a 3.0 GPA. Low and inside. One and one the count. Kearns can get on. That would bring up Jamie Williams. One ball and one strike. One strike. Count. Foul down the right field line. Out of play. 
Ball and two strikes. So Alexander ahead on the count. I need to be a little shorter, or well, that needs to be a, a little, little taller. One of the two. <laughs> Swing and a miss. So Kara Alexander strikes out the side, sandwiches the last two out with a single, but no harm as. How many strikeouts does Kara have? I'm just going to do game. my count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. And how about uh, Joanna? Glad Put you asked. On the Seven for Joanna. Yep. You're going to stand on the chair, maybe that one. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, but you're too tall. So we move to the bottom of the sixth. The Warriors will have uh, Megan Branner leading off, scheduled at least. Followed by Jessica Woolwine and the catcher, Jennifer Smith. Megan is uh, in the dance line for Kickatan and on the uh, Kickatan yearbook stamp. I just thought she, of something, Bob. What's that? Well, we won't have a problem with it getting dark. Because we got lights here. <laughs> They'll have to play till this game is over with. <laughs> you just figured that well, out. Well, I just dawned upon the light just came on. <laughs> you talked <laughs> about the lights coming Great on, but the light didn't well, come on. The light on didn't come on. There. I mean, oh, I, was, okay. I was thinking back to the first game that was uh, ended it because of darkness. That right. won't be the problem here. It might Not be tonight. ending because of something else, but it won't be the darkness. <laughs> Maybe the curfew. Megan has had uh, 28 put outs, 33 assists, 16 hits, four doubles, one triple, and three home runs this year. So far, she is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Fouls that one back, one and one. Well, they moved Megan from third to shortstop this year. I just saw my first Skeetle. This one hits the shortstop. Nice play to get that. Both teams getting good defense. This will send Woolwine to the plate. Well, Jessica is a varsity cheerleader captain. First team all district cheerleader. Here's the replay Spanish. of that last play. We watch the replay. She's Spanish Honor Society, Safe School Team, Key Clubs, Latin Club, Yearbook, Sports Editor, Club Editor. Oh, but she's got time to do anything else. She's had 96 putouts this year, four assists without an error. At 14 stolen bases, 21 hits, seven doubles, two triples, and two home runs. Warriors would like to see one of those HRs right now. Swing and a miss. One and one the count with one out. One one is our score. Big Ten batting in the home half of the sixth inning. The two leadoff batters have been the only runners to score for either team. People scored in the top of the first for Kikitan and Kui scored for Phoebus. <laughs> Popped up right side. Second baseman Kui is over there and drops the ball. Had it but couldn't hold on to it. That hit the base of the glove, Tim, and with that spin on the ball, it just popped out. So the Warriors get what they wanted. They've got a base runner. They got one out, and they bring it up. Uh, Jen Smith. Jen Smith batting 404, the second highest on the team. And she is so due, she is 0 for 2. She's got a 3.23 GPA. Honorable mention in sophomore year as the first team all district. She's had four doubles, two triples, two home runs. Foul tip. The Warriors looking for a hit from Smith. 
batting better than 400, and she is 0 for 2. Checks for the signs from Coach McDonald down the third baseline. And I guarantee you these 400 type averages didn't come against the quality pitcher she's facing right now. Change up is just off the plate. One and one, your count. Hits it sharply. Oh, nice double play. Oh, and that's to make it up for there, run it? Yes, sir. That will definitely make up for an error. So she erased it. Watch this. Hit sharply, right side. Quee comes up with it over to first. Plenty of time to record the double play. So we have played six complete. So that's 18 innings they have played, and each have scored one run. One run on three hits for the Warriors. One run on three hits for the Phantoms. <laughs> oh, you sound like you're repeating yourself. I am, I am. This is the seventh inning stretch here, Bob, but you've been stretching the whole time. Well, this is the seventh inning you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> we started a new trend in our baseball game, brother. We had the fifth inning stretch. Watch out. Didn't catch on very well, though. Uh, well, we enjoyed it. The yeah, other it people didn't, couldn't understand us. what we were doing. Got, uh, Two contests coming up uh, Wednesday. We what have kind of contests we got. We got soccer coming up soccer. at Darling Stadium. Who's our? Who are the combatants? That's <laughs> Bethel and Hampton. And Braxton can't wait to get over there. Set Me up. too. That's an easy setup for you, Brax. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look like a happy camper. <laughs> hey, Braxton. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> hey, we haven't talked about a crew any other than Braxton. We've been talking about him all night, so we don't have to talk about him anymore. But we do have Sarah Bowers is here, not Susan. Oh, yeah, and let's, let's correct ourselves. Yeah, now. last week. Baseball game. Baseball game, yeah. Scotty threw in a ringer on us here. Yeah. Assumed we had uh, Sarah Don't Call Me Susan. But we had Susan Don't Call Me Sarah. That's right. Hello. Hello. And of course, got Ron Baton down there on the uh, first baseline, standing on top of a truck being eaten up by the mosquitoes. Andy Foley in the truck doing graphics and My audio. Sister, Jennifer Ward. Beth Penn doing the slow motion, and of course, Scotty Bowers doing everything else, and Don Sharaus was hey, out right. here earlier. <laughs> he was out I don't earlier. know if he's still here or not. He already left the building. But I tell you what, Don, we're looking for our earphones. <laughs> <laughs> Earphones and mud flaps. All right, leading off, Jamie Williams, followed by Danielle Woods, and, and let, I think Amanda Kramer came back in, so she'll probably bat third, although she had been replaced by Angel Perkins. Kara Alexander delivers. This one in high hopper to the pitcher. Over to first, easy out for the first out of the inning. Danielle Wood steps in, batting left-handed. 265 GPA. He's got a 356 batting average. I mean, I'm sorry, GPA. <laughs> One of those things. So batting 265, but her GPA was 3656. Back to back ground outs, pitcher to first. And this will bring up Kramer, Amanda Kramer. Struck out her first time up. This pinch hit for last time. This time she hits a soft looper. This could be trouble, but it's caught by the left fielder. So quickly, in order, go the Phantoms. They keep that. Uh... I 
Actually, I think I might have missed a, a, a hit the last time these, these guys were up. I put my eyeballs in. <laughs> we don't have any lights in there. No, I'm going to have to work on this one. Let's see. Nope, that was a base. I'm not sure what I've got here. I think that was a single that we had last time. So, one run on four hits for the Phantoms. We got one run on three hits for the Warriors. Players of the game we've been talking about. You almost have to go to the number one position. Yeah. Without too much hesitation. I mean, let's face it. Without your pitcher in this game, you're uh, in deep well, trouble. Well, but you also look at the other battery mate. The catcher in both of these teams have done an excellent job. They're the ones that's got to catch that fastball coming in there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't mean it's just a no, no brainer, but uh, certainly it's been a pitcher's duel to. But you and I would give the the uh, player of the game to the catcher every game yes, because we, we we think that's one of the toughest positions to play. It's where our heart lies. But we can't do that. All right, Holly Champion is the do up batter. She should be followed by Allison Class and Kara Alexander. <coughs> Good defense has been played by both teams this afternoon. It really has. No I do want to remind everybody David Allen Zoom has recognized the senior on each one of the softball, baseball, and soccer teams with the highest GPA. These players will receive a plaque for outstanding academic excellence, and that will be happening the first week of June. I think it's the first school board meeting in June. At Kickatan, we got Kara Alexander. Baseball, we got Chris Lesser. Girls soccer, Christy Cohen. And boys soccer, Jason Stewart. For the Phantoms, we have softball, Jamie Williams. Baseball, Adam Wright. Girls soccer, Jennifer Jennings. And boys soccer, Brian Levek. Batters Holly Champion. She fouls the first pitch off. 0 and 1 the count. Bottom of the seventh inning. 1 1. Kickatan and Phoebus. China she River. was a wrestling manager one time. Tim played basketball as a freshman year. Wow. Nice play by the first baseman. And that'll bring up your DH, Allison Class. And Jamie Williams done a good job over there on first base. Now, both of these teams have just played outstanding defense. Interestingly, uh, the only lapse in defense uh, led to the Phoebus run, two errors in the inning that they scored. Outside, you know, the, the lights here are, are adequate, but with this fast pitch that these young ladies can throw up there, it's tough to see that ball and in, in not extremely bright light. Well, Allison is batting for Tasha DeMent. Now, Tasha's just a ninth grader, but she's got a 4.08 GPA. Fouled out of play. Uh, this is her first year on a varsity. She was the best offensive player on the JVs last year, and she's a member of the youth group at her church. Now, Allison, being a DH, this is her second year. I'm sorry, this is her, she had two years on JV, and this is her first year on a varsity. She's a member of youth and government, Kiets. Uh, just, just stays busy. Winter soccer, varsity tennis. And as you said, she has a lot of, a lot of energy. One ball and two strikes. One, one, our score. Newtown looking to win this game in the bottom of the sixth, the seventh rather. Strikeout. Ball got away from the catcher, so she throws her out. And now two outs brings up the pitcher, Kara Alexander. Well, JV, uh, as a JV pitcher, Kara had 329 strikeouts, a 32 and 4 record. It's a lot of strikeouts. She's a member of the Kiets, Mu Alpha. That a National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Kickatan Marching Band for four years, been a member of the Fox Arrow Baptist Church Handbell Choir, Virginia Girls State Delicate, Varsity Track. She has got so many things she does. Hey, <laughs> 
Two balls. Yes, Mr. And Rowden, no we strike. have plenty of film. <laughs> Two no. Swing and a miss. Amber Rowden's daddy, who was who played, remember she played at the, the Kickatan team about five, Absolutely, six years ago. Absolutely, I remember. He's yelling at us, do we have enough film? I don't know, I hope Scotty brought some. Two and two. Ball three. Full count to Kara. Both pitches with great control. I, I can't, I, I'm trying to even remember if there was a base on balls. There has not been, I don't think. There's been a hit pitch, a hit batter a couple of times. Yep, a couple of errors. That one's fouled. So Kara stays alive. Should she be able to reach? Jenny Hain would be due up. innings. Brack, how long we got before pay, pay change? Well, we got plenty of time, 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, one run on four hits unofficially for Phoebus, one run on three hits for Kikatan. And we move to the top of the eighth. 19 innings between these two teams and a total of two runs have been scored. These two teams have played each other coming into today's contest 37 times. Kickathan has won 25 of them. There's been two ties, and Phoebus has won 10 of them. Since 1983, they've had 213 wins, 86 losses, and two ties. Four district championships, one regional championship, one state runner-up. That was in 87. We remember we did that team, that game. It was right here, Tim. Yep. They've had six second-place finishes and two <coughs> district tournament championships in 97 and 98. We did that game last year, as a matter of fact, the championship game. I'm going to have to put the old bifocals on here or something from this point forward. Top of the order in the eighth. Leadoff batter Claire Queen, who uh, was instrumental in stopping a rally with a nice double play earlier. And she'll be followed by Robin Sanzo and the pitcher Joanna Irvin. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Oh, we got it. We got a radar gun down there. On the corner, one and one. <clears throat> Claire is uh, on the drama, in the drama club. She's also a National Honor Society. Foul down the third baseline. 3.46 GPA, ranked 44th in her class, just a junior.
This one is going to be trouble. Quee reaches on a blooper between four fielders. That was a, just a little old slap shot that she hits. That's her specialty, just a little old slap shot. All right, with nobody out now, the Phantoms get the leadoff batter on base. It brings up Chrissy Sanzo, batting 245. One of the seniors on this team. Shows butt, lays it down, third baseman plays it. Over to first, out, but that all-important lead runner is over at second base. Excellent execution on the bunt. You might ask, because of the quickness of the play, why not try for the lead runner? But in this case, you don't take that risk. You get the sure out. You got to get that sure out, especially in this game. So Joanna Irvin now can help her own cause. She's got a runner in second with one out. Joanna's got a 3.0 GPA. I don't know what her batting average is. I got everybody's but hers. But I know she hits the ball well. She'd love nothing more than to make good contact right here. Takes the first pitch high. Got to be so cautious now. A passed ball, a mishandled ball. Any one of those things, and you've got a runner over third with the quickness that Quee has. Already shown that she scored in the third inning on two errors. Of course, she can, and she will round third. She's coming home. It's cut off, and she'll score. She might want to go back and touch the home plate. What a nice hit! Excellent hit. So Irvin. Helps her own cause, as I said. That's what I said. So the runner has just been called out because she did not touch home plate. Well, the run does not count. However, let's see that again, Scotty. I thought that she missed home plate when I saw it in live action. But I'm surprised that without a protest from the other team that he can automatically call that. Here's the replay. You watch it and you call it for yourself. This is a crucial run. Urban with the single up the middle. Sanzo, I mean, excuse me, Queen rather. Now watch as she comes across home plate. Great camera work, guys. She never touched it. home plate. Excellent call by the official. <laughs> and great camera work. What a what an opportune opportune time for us to have that great shot at home plate. Base hit, left field. This might still be an opportunity for the Phantoms. So back to back singles. Nice job by Jennifer Ward. Made good contact with the ball. Brings up Crystal Woods. Jen Ward, I'm sorry, I was so caught up with that replay, I didn't announce who the batter was. And now, Crystal Woods with two outs. Swing and a miss. Huge misplay on a go-ahead run. Remember I said she may want to go back and touch home, but I, I thought that the other team would have to protest it before the next pitch would be thrown. Obviously not. Base hit up the middle. This will score a run, I believe. It's going to be close. And she got her. Oh, what a throw by the first, the center fielder. So three, check that, four singles in the inning. Watch the replay. If she'd have slid, Tim, I think she'd have got in. I think you're right. Here's the play at home, and she just was dead. Catcher had the ball waiting for her. Four hits in the inning and no runs. 
a run taken off the board because a player did not touch home base. Well, that was a oh nice throw God, by Colburn out of uh, center field. That ball did not bounce. It came right, right into the uh, catcher's glove. Our replay was conclusive on that play where Kui was trying to score from second. And, you know, in defense of the young lady, it's not that difficult to do. She stepped just before the home plate, and then her stride carried her over home plate. She could have gone back and touched yep. before she, she, because the umpire, if you'll notice, before the pitcher had the ball back on the mound, ready to throw the next pitch, there wasn't any call. The umpire was waiting for someone to do something, either to touch home base or something, and they, they didn't, and that cost the Phantoms a run that could eventually cost them the game. But, you know, I'm not being critical of the, of the runner by any means. It's just one of those things that happens sometimes. Okay, so Crystal Woods is going to come out of the game now, and we're going to find out I thought he said King. King, I believe, I believe he said King, yeah. King, maybe? King, there's King. Just Number don't know four. what, what Miss King. Leah King. Thing. What's the name? I think Leah. it's Leah. Okay. We'll find out a little bit about her when we get a chance. Where is she playing? She's going in for Crystal Woods, so I would assume she will be the DH. Does not affect the play at the moment, according to what I've got here, since the Warriors are batting. They have Hain, the leadoff batter, followed by Coburn, and then the top of the order. It's this one, right field. This could be trouble. And the catch made by the right fielder. Who was that batting? Scott, Scott wanted to know how many innings it the pitch. You can't just pitch. Uh, uh, Hayne was the batter. They can pitch and pitch and pitch. I think they can just keep on pitching. That was number 15 batting, Tim. Yeah, that. Oh, it was number 15? Yeah. Melson, I understand that uh, that was the batter for Hain. Yeah, Julie Nelson. Nelson? Or Melson. Nelson. Melson. Okay. She's first year on a varsity. She's an ROTC. He's got a 3.71 GPA, just a junior. She flied out, and that brings up Aaron Coburn. Coburn. And they called a foul ball. I'm not quite sure. The, I guess he ruled it came off the plate. This is a young lady made that throw from uh, center field. Tell you, the defense has just been outstanding. When they needed to have it, it was there. One out, bottom of the eighth. They were in extra innings. Imagine that. These two teams in extra innings, Bob. Yeah. What are the chances of that? <laughs> this one hit to Kui over to first in time. And that will bring up the top of the order. Felicia Peoples, who scored the only Kikatan run in the game. Hey, the tape that's Two outs in the eighth. Big changeup. Oh, what a changeup. Man, I thought the ball was coming, tearing in there, and it floated up. And Felicia Peoples just stared at it and didn't know exactly what to do. It's called strike. 
Heat outside, one and one. Scotty, want to know how many innings they'll let these young ladies pitch? Joanna pitched three games in one day this summer. Hit for the shortstop. Over to first. So the beat goes on. I'm gonna get my next score sheet out here before too long. We'll be right back to Francis Asbury Park for the conclusion of this game after a brief timeout. And we are back at Francis Asbury Park where the crowd has been treated to one very fine ball game. These two teams have played extremely well. And we move now to the ninth inning. This game was scheduled for seven, so those of you that normally watch uh, the softball game, you know that. And this one will go at least to the ninth. Phantoms had the opportunity to have won the game in their half of the eighth. But a miscue on a touching home plate. And then a good play on a throw from center field to tag a runner out. Just a perfect throw. I mean, the ball was right there. No chance for the runner. She was being waited for by the catcher. So the leadoff batter. It's Kearns in it, batting 254. That's exactly who it is. Fouled out of play. Kearns leading off, scheduled to be followed by Jamie Williams and Danielle Woods. This one hit back, mishandled by the shortstop and on at first base. She better be careful. She turned towards second. She's got to go to second now. And now she's going to be able to get back safely. You make that turn towards second, you are open season. You've got to turn away. That's the basics of base running. When you go to first, you turn away from the field. If you make that turn to second, you are playable. Watch the replay here. Gonna see to see how she turns in her jubilance towards second, and then she evades the tag. And now there's gonna be a discussion. McDonald, as you see her, got back on the replay, but back to the live action. Uh, Richard McDonald wants to know about that rundown and well, the ability of the, the base yep. pass, maybe. I don't know. It was a very fortunate thing for the Phantoms that they didn't end up having her tagged out, and that would have been another opportunity lost. Uh, I think Richard will lose this argument, but. Uh, so some questionable, I better go at that, base running by the Phantoms have cost them here and almost cost them again, but this time the dodge the bullet and they have a base runner on first and nobody out jamie williams is the batter she's had a great done a great job at uh, first base she liked to thank coach trainer for four great years of softball she is oh for three and very due at this point but you know this amazing thing have three trip or doubles in one game that's just amazing to me Lays it down perfectly. And that will advance the runner to second. Kearns daring the throw from Melson, uh, but does not get it. So she stands on second. Sacrifice perfectly by Williams.
So we've got a we got a substitution well, this here. This is the uh, young lady that came in. Right. Yep. Number four for yeah, the Phantoms. Yeah, King. She's batting uh, 221. Been a member of the varsity team for two years. She's a varsity cheerleader, German Honor Society Key Club, Vocal Ensemble, German Club Math Honor Society, National Honor Society. She's got a 3.9 GPA, and he's just a junior. And went way outside the strike zone to attempt to bunt the ball. Got the strike call on her. That's 0 and 2. Phantom's trying to get that runner over to third. Foul back. And that will be the same as a strikeout. A failed attempt at a bunt with two strikes is an automatic out. Amanda Kramer coming up. She's batting 265. Second year on the varsity. And this is just her third year playing softball, Tim. Hits this one. This will be a base hit, I think. Yes, it will. That'll score the run. The umpire was determined she was going to be out before she got there. He, she got a single with an R, RBI. Oh, yeah, the run definitely counted. She scored the run before the tag out. So the Phantoms take the lead in the top of the ninth. But now the Warriors get their turn. Watch this play. There's you see the run scoring well ahead of the tag out at second. No question about that. And the young lady made sure she pounced on the whole plate. <laughs> there was no doubt about that. She did a little soft shoe on home plate to make sure there was no question. So now the Phantoms, Joanna Irvin, have to hold the Warriors here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, there th she's three outs from this win. Talk 21 innings, Tim, before we had a decision. Or I haven't possible got one yet. Decision. <laughs> possible decision. Yes, possible. And got the number two batter uh, in the lineup due up. That's Megan Branner. Followed by Woolwine and Smith. So you've got uh, the meat of your order coming up. If you're going to have to be in this position, that's where you want to be. And the Phantoms had gained the lead. If you join us late, they had gained the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Only they lose the lead, or at least lose. Yeah, they went back to a tie when a runner missed home plate. So Branner will lead off Joanna Irvin with a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the ninth. Again, our sponsors tonight, this afternoon, start out in the afternoon. It's well past afternoon now as we are at 8.35. And those sponsors, again, we want to thank them. Zooms, Zoom Sitco, David Allen and the fine folks there. Tyler Wood Gear Funeral. and Gear Printing. And Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. Irvin delivers strike two, swinging. Swing and a miss, strike three. And again, that that lack of light down there is not helping these batters much, I'm sure. That's the tenth strikeout. Double digit K's for Joanna Irvin. 
and this the batter. This young lady to get it started, Jessica Woolwine, is batting 447. In the dirt for a ball. Haven't mentioned much about him, don't want him necessarily, but uh, we are happy to hear that Mr. Trainum will be coaching over at Phoebus for another season. Foul back. Wade, the very likable and longtime softball coach with the Phantoms. One and one the count, one out, bottom of the ninth. Phantoms trying to pull out the victory. Irvin delivers, and it's inside. Two balls and a strike. With that big floater up there that time. This one hit up the middle. Shortstop up with it, over to first, in time. Close play. Man, was that close. Woo! One out away. So the last chance is the catcher, Jen Smith. Jennifer, on the evening, is 0 for 3. Struck out and grounded out and lined out. And the Phantoms now with one out away from pulling off a Tremendous victory. This one hit to the right field. This was over the head of the right fielder. This might even draw a throw at home, and this one is going to be a tie ball game. What are you? Chances of that happening? Whoa! I think so. <laughs> Well, that's the replay. We got it. Replay. Replay. There you see it. it just went over the right fielder's head, and she's rounded, and she's headed. Tim, there's no doubt in my mind she's going to go all the way. And the throw off the mark, I don't know if even if it had been a perfect throw, if she would have had her. I'm running out of score sheet. What do I do when I run out of score sheet, Bob? <laughs> Punt. Punt, huh? <laughs> yeah. Holly Champion up. And she will ground out, but that's one out too late for the Phantoms as they give up a tying run in the bottom of the ninth. Good. Bring me back some hot dogs, will you, Mr. Blau? Maybe 11. <laughs> <laughs> Put everything on them. I'll buy it. Oh, he's buying All right, too. now we're talking. <laughs> if it goes to 11, I'll buy it. <laughs> well, folks, you got your money's worth on this one. We move to, you guessed it, the 10th inning. Tied at two. Two outs and the Warriors came up with a big hit. Jen Smith. And that hand is for Jennifer Smith as she finally gets her uh, catcher equipment on and gets behind the plate. Check and see if we have enough film and some skin so soft, please. <laughs> what a game! I'm not. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how you score 
that hit, I guess it had to be a home run. Since, oh, yeah, no doubt in my mind. Since she, uh, no, that, the, the throw, would, even if it was on time, it would, was, uh, wouldn't have got her. No, I got to give her a home run on that. Well, the right fielder never touched the ball before it went over her head, so you'd have to, although, you know, in retrospect, 2020 hindsight, you would want to play deeper so the ball wouldn't get over your head with two outs in that situation. But, you know, no one's really hit it out of the infield for the better part of the game anyway. That's correct. But now, speaking of that, the infield and outfield for the Warriors, the outfielders in this play right now are right fielder, center fielder, and left fielder are on the edge of the, the infield grass. Who do we have batting here? This that is top of the order, Claire Quee. Quickly ahead is Alexander, 0-2. Well, it might help if I get the right roster out here. She is due up, followed by Sanzo and Irvin. Takes a hack at it. Still at 0-2. Well, the reason the uh, outfield is in, Tim, is because this young lady is not a powerful hitter, but she does slap the ball. And so you really, it's like you've got three extra infielders. Yeah. And that's what she does. She slaps it and the second baseman can't come up with it. So Quee, very smartly this time, turns away from right field, back towards the dugout to avoid being a possible candidate for a tag out. So Kui, who has just played a really fine game, she had a single in the first, scored in the third, had a single in the seventh, and now a single here in the tenth. Again, the Warriors trying to prevent the Phantoms from moving that runner over, and of course what's happening here is Sanzo squared around trying to butt her to second. Foul ball. The only thing keeping most of these fans alive out here is the cool weather has probably <laughs> kept the mosquitoes from being too active. <laughs> Down a third baseline foul. Now something has been called and I'm not sure what it is. Batter, or the runner left too soon. So yeah. Kui is out having left the, the bag prematurely. So that puts two outs. And uh, what's the count here? One and one? Well, no, that's only one out. One out, I'm sorry, one out. Yeah, don't get me ahead of myself here. <laughs> I would, don't want to do that. <clears throat> now it's two outs. Now it's two outs. You just knew that was out. <laughs> Well, she's premature. That's just two strikes. So what happened was on the play where Quee left early, that was a dead ball. Did not count as a pitch. Now, oh, and two is the count. One out. Let's get our math together here. Fouled out of play into the stands. Robin Prissy Sanzo is one of the seniors on two seniors on this uh, Phoebus team. Ball and two strikes. Should we send out for some coffee or? <laughs> I think so. Hot dogs and coffee sound good to me. I'm good to say, ate a big lunch. Two and two the count. We're in the 10th inning. Phantoms, they're half of the 10th, tied up at two. 
Full count. Inside ball four. So Sanzo, who thought she had actually been out, ends up getting on base by the base on ball. So now Irvin can help her own cause. That is the first walk issued by either one of these pitchers in 10 innings of play and nine, nine innings and a third of play. So Irvin now, as you, she steps to the plate, the outfielders move back considerably from their previous position. This is high. Sanzo back in time. Scotty may have to keep that motor running to turn on the heat <laughs> before this is over. If I'd had the air conditioning earlier. Hey, you might want to turn that air down a wee bit. Good shot of Joanna. Two and O, oh, runner on first, one out. Phantoms trying to retake the lead. Urban swings and misses. A little off of that. Two teams have now played 21 innings and scored a grand total of four runs between them. Last contest they played, we mentioned earlier, if you joined us late, they went 12 innings and ended up in a scoreless tie. Didn't have the lights to use. Tonight we have the advantage of the lights, and now we're in the 10th. Well, the first game was played before daylight time, and it was played over at uh, Phoebus where they don't have the lights. And that's the second walk issued in a row by Kara Alexander. Might well, be getting a little bit tired. Well, I'm just you know? going to say, uh, if she's not, she's not human because <laughs> she's been out there. Uh, game started at 6.30 at 2 hours and 20 minutes old, and she's thrown a lot of pitches, 10 innings, getting a little chilly. Muscles tend to tighten up a little bit. And our batter is Jen Ward, who is 0 for 3, got three Ks on the scoreboard this afternoon. So you know she'd like to atone for some of that. She's a member of the Key Club, Beautification Committee, French Club, National Honor Society. Good heads up play by the shortstop. Realizing the runner coming by, she mishandled the ball, but had the presence of mind to grab it and tag Sanzo as she went by her. So Ward reaches on the fielder's choice, and we now have two outs. And the batter is. That was a nice job by Branner. Crystal Woods, who is back in the game, fouled out of play. Crystal's back in. And if she's still 21, she is. Yeah. Leah King had come in for her, but you can re enter the game. Keeping me confused, but that happens a lot. We are waiting now for some softballs to be returned as uh, I think they've got two that they keep in play and both of them uh, have been fouled out. So I guess that's the game. That's it, no We're balls, <laughs> but we just go home. Oh, here comes oh, here one. Here comes one. <laughs> two outs, runners at first and second. 
One strike to count to the batter, Crystal Woods. I think we got a new softball being brought Man, in here. The umpire's going to. can be a little slick. Yep. He's going to rough it up a wee bit. Well, you know, uh, I think the, the crew would probably agree to when we play this long a game, we get double pay, right? Braxton shaking his head yes. <laughs> You're looking at me. <laughs> This one hit center field and off the glove. That'll score one run. Here comes another across two runs for the Phantoms and Crystal Woods will go to third. Right off the glove, that ball curved right away from the center fielder. So, the Phantoms in the top of the 10th score a pair. Still have a runner at third with two outs. That was a two out double by Crystal Woods who advanced to third on the throw. And that will bring up Shannon Kearns. Her ponytail obscures her number on the back, so it makes it a little more difficult. Or, yeah, ponytail. Hit to the right side, over to first, in time for the third out. But the Phantoms, once again, take the lead. And the big question now will be, can they hold the lead? And will Allie McBeal be a rerun? <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna pick our players of the game. We're gonna do that now. Uh, let's wait. Let's see what happens. We're, this is this game's not over. We <laughs> thought it might be over with two outs and <laughs> yes, and, we did. Uh, you know, one one out away from the win by Phoebus, but uh, <laughs> well, let's see. Get your get your money's worth of this game. You know how that no matter what they play, because there's no charge to get in. That's right, no charge. Come down and enjoy. I tell you, you can't get better softball than what you see in the Peninsula District. These young ladies and all these teams play very well. Well, I tell you, the Hampton City Schools are well represented. Bethel's got an excellent season going, yep. and these two teams have just played outstanding this afternoon. Well, and then the uh, tournament starts, I think, Thursday, the district tournament. Number one and number two has a bye, and then uh, three play six and four and five play. And the top two teams go to the regionals. Wade Trainum conversing with the umpires. Gonna do a little rub down on the softball again. Apparently a couple of those softballs that went out of play have not been returned. So they want to get some uh, dirt, some of that red clay on that softball. And again, it, it, it's been a while since we mentioned our crew. Seems like a long time ago. And, <laughs> well, and these folks, them. well, you know, these folks, uh, especially the, the people on the camera, have been there now for almost two and a half hours without a break. You know, and so baseball, uh, you get some breaks, and then football, of course, you get halftime. But our crew, Sarah Bowers, Ron Baton, and Nathaniel Braxton all doing a great job with the camera work. We had that missed, missed play at home plate perfectly recorded. Scotty Bowers has done a super job with the directing as always. Bev Penn working the slow-mo. And she slowed that down so you could really get oh, a good shot of that absolutely foot perfect. missing the, the base. <laughs> got Andy Foley working graphics and audio. That's what happened to get that new equipment. That's right, got that new, new equipment, equipment. To slow it down. Do that baby right. A great job. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Excellent job, guys and gals. Just a super job on the afternoon and evening. Irvin delivers strike. And Crystal bounce around class. <laughs> Young lady is just perpetual motion. It's fun to watch someone like that. Yes, it is. 
Bottom of the 10th. Excuse me, ball over to, and draws the oh, first baseman off the bag. Throw. Brings up Kara Alexander. Kara's got a chance to help her cause. They don't pack up the, uh, the equipment yet. Replay. But she had to stop, she had to catch the ball. I mentioned that uh, Kara is going to, uh, planning to attend Methodist College in Fedville, North Carolina. She's gonna play softball for the team. They're called the Monarchs. That was a smart play by the first baseman, Williams. Yes. She was drawn off the bag. Strike call. And the important thing, as you said, was to catch the ball because if she stays on the bag and makes a stab at it and it goes into right field, you got to run her on second or third or might even come all the way home. So that was a, a lot smart of things play. can happen. You're right. Strike two call. Now oh, right on they the, got the runner all the way down halfway. Boy, they could have thrown that. I guess they just didn't want to take that chance. But that ball class, caught the corner. Class was a good 20 feet off the bag and daring them to throw. And I know Rich McDonald's over there clearing his throat right now. Said, look, draw the throw if you may, but let's not make it too, too careless. Phantoms trying to put this one away. They've had a chance earlier and couldn't do it. Jen Smith made sure they didn't. This one hit back to the pitcher. Irvin over for first for the sure out. So Kara, who's just had an outstanding game on the mound, has grounded out pitcher to first three out of the four times that she batted. And brings up Julie Melson, who is also uh, a pitcher. She's got a 1.17 ERA and a win against Heritage this year. Julie takes the pitch for a call strike. Runner on second with one out. Phantoms know the runner at second is not the important one here. It's the batter. Swing and a miss. Ball gets away from the catcher, and that'll easily advance the runner. No reason to throw it down there because that run is rather inconsequential. Yeah, it's the one at the plate. It's the one that you got to be concerned about. Now, they don't want her to score because that extends the inning, but uh, they want to get the batter right now and get that second out. No balls, two, two strikes. Nelson. Lays away, and that is high and outside. <clears throat> We're working on trying to get home for the late news now, Bob. <laughs> I told Ruth, well, I'll eat when I come home because it won't be too late. Yeah. Strike three. Now that's two outs. And that brings up your hit. Is that your leadoff batter coming up? No, actually, your number nine batter. This would be Aaron Coburn. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Aaron. So Aaron looks down at third. Richard McDonald says, I got a signal for you. Hit the ball. <laughs> Just get on base somehow. Just keep this inning alive so we can extend this game. It's to the right side. First baseman up with it. And dies for the out. Is she in time? Yes. And the Phantoms win the ball game in 10 innings. What a game. So we're going to wrap it up rather quickly here. But Bob, our players of the game for Kikatan, Jennifer Smith, the catcher. And uh, for the Phantoms, Crystal Woods with that big two-run base hit. And again, our hats off to both of these teams. Gabe could not have been played any better as far as I could tell. You got that right. We want to thank, thank our corporate sponsors. Yep, thank our sponsors. Wood Funeral Home, where Richard Pulley is the funeral director. Zooms with five, four, three, two, one, four convenient locations. <laughs> and Gear Up Printing, where Tom Gear and his folks will take care of your printing needs. The final score again in 10 innings is Phoebus four and Kikatan two for Bob Hintz, and the entire Channel 46 crew, this is Tim Cole. Thanks for watching.
Good evening, everybody.